This is the most recently completed project. This is a 17 foot Alumacraft Bandit, which is now the Brigade Bandit. I did a full interior build out of this boat. We did not do much to the outside, minus patching a few holes and then adding any of our fittings for our live well or pump outs. And then we did actually replace the bunks on the trailer. But beyond that, it's mainly just a full interior modern restoration. Hey guys, the folks at Six Sense Fishing have done it again with a brand new, unique, and highly anticipated bait. This is called the Six Sense Panorama. The Panorama has virtually endless rigging possibilities. How you fish it is only limited by your imagination. Available in many detailed colors and a variety of sizes on SixCentsFishing.com. This is a hot bait, so if it's sold out, click the notify button so you can get an email as soon as they're back in stock. Show your support for the channel and save a little bit of money at the same time by using the code BRIGADE at checkout for 10% off your entire order. I'm excited about this project because guys, I bought an aluminum welder and have learned how to weld aluminum. Now I'm by no means a master, but this boat is the first all welded framing that I have done. And I think it turned out really, really phenomenal. Of course, you can't see all the welded framing in the finished stages, but that will be shown in the build video featuring one by two, one sixteenth aluminum tube framing. And covering up all that all welded aluminum tube frame framework is 090 sheet aluminum decking throughout, including the floor system, back deck and front deck. And then I've used the TB Nation lids they're aluminum drop-in lids that are powder coated black. I'll show you those in a second. And then we did the same thing here with the TB Nation recessed foot tray for the pedal on the trolling motor. And then out back, we've got the bass seats installed with aluminum lids that they mount to. Uh, more storage under there. And again, I'll get to all that. We've got the TB Nation center console coming in handy in between those seats. Storage area on the bench. And then in the back, we've got another uh, big hatch area. And then, of course, a live well in here. I want to make a couple notes. Uh, the outboard is going to be an electric outboard by Torquedo. The customer already owns it. It's a uh, model he's had for a few years doing tournament fishing here in the state of Georgia. This is going to be an electric only tournament boat. He's actually fishing a tournament today on his co-angler's boat and that's where that outboard is. But we went ahead and installed his extra throttle control in the boat. When he gets the boat, he's gonna do the outboard. He's gonna do the battery packs throughout, including the batteries for the trolling motor. And he's also gonna do his graph and sonar setup. But beyond that, I did the entire build throughout the boat and it's all set up for him to rig it up with his electronics and batteries and outboard. I think what we'll do is just start in the back of the boat and work our way forward. Now, I mentioned that all the decking is aluminum and we've got the aluminum drop-in lids. All of the inside of the boat is completely covered in HydroTurf. And this stuff is available on tbnation.net. Of course, you could use the code BRIGADE at checkout on tbnation.net, as always, to save 5% off your total order. For a project like this, that can be a significant amount, especially if you're getting lids or consoles or uh, jump seats or, or hydro turf. So be sure to use that code BRIGADE at tbnation.net. This hydro turf is actually the gray with the light blue grooved lines. And then I've got the flat black throughout the boat along the side rails completely encapsulating the cockpit guys this is all hydro turf work that has been done and it took a very long time actually you'll see in the build video how this was all done and i did a hydro turf installation video on this boat so stay tuned for that overall a lot of work to get this lined up perfectly going down the center of the boat, making sure your lines are straight and they don't go crooked, and then making sure you've got tight cuts, tight joints, a lot of work, a lot of templating. Everything has been turfed, and as always, I'm extremely proud of my work. I think this one turned out really, really good, and I really dig the look of the black and gray contrast. We've got the white cap flush latches. These are the locking latches. We use locking throughout. The only latch that is actually non-locking is right there on the live well. These are keyed, and here you can see the underside of that TB Nation Outdoors lid. It's got the hat channel welded in place for good support. We did gloss black powder coat in all the lids throughout this boat, which I really like the gloss black. And then you can see underneath, he's got extra storage up and around the live well. You can get to his live well plumbing. And then over here, I've got the old powerhouse lithium battery wired up for the electronics all the onboard electronics powerhouse lithium now available through tbnation.net 
And then on the other side, not sure if you could see back in there, but you got your live well plumbing on that side as well. Plenty of storage back here, guys, for battery packs. He's got all of the Flowrite equipment. Of course, the folks at Flowrite love their equipment, use them in all my builds. He's got his bilge pump. And then you can see here, because we did not notch this, this hatch lid on the transom, this is actually enclosed. We do have the drain tube there and it just drains right there down to the channel. Everything's been painted in this boat and I really like how open this storage is back here. He could fit a lot of battery packs for that electric outboard. And you can see there, I've got them turned on, but it is daytime, but we do have LED lights throughout all of the hatches inside of the boat. I'm gonna show you the live well. This is a tournament grade aluminum live well, again, from TB Nation. You've got your overflow on that side. You got your drain that goes back to the pump and you got your recirc aerator pump out combo on that side from flow right uh, did something different on this one I actually been doing this on my past few builds and this is just making the live well lid a lot smaller and then getting the, the framing and the decking over the live well as you can see it goes up under the deck and then the decking actually acts as a splash guard as opposed to having a larger lid with a separate splash guard and this has been working out better for my guys got the two brand new bass boat seats installed uh, don't know where my customer got those from. He actually purchased them online and drop shipped them to me and I just installed them. But in between the new seats is that TB Nation center console coming in handy. I did do the custom turf on the console top to match the decking and then actually did the turf inside of the console as well. It's got the two built-in cup holders and it is powder coated black. Underneath the seats, you can see there, got some cockpit lights, some LED spotlights underneath there again this is all turfed and then he's got his floor drain these actually just fold down and you could swing them forward because they're mounted to lids and then you can access extra storage he's got his pole light under here all of that is hydro turf throughout led lights so it fully goes underneath the console and then on this side he's got access to his fuse box and then his shut off for all of his electronics these are both branded by TB Nation. TB Nation now does kill switches and their fuse boxes in-house, so you can find those on the site. And then over here, this is just simply a custom access panel because we had to run a lot of wiring from the back of the boat through this side panel, including his cable for his live oil pump and then to the console. And this just gave us a center point of access to fish wires through, and I wanted to leave that for him for any future maintenance. A lot of work went into this console. Uh, of course, it looks custom and it looks clean, but if you were to see the amount of holes that were cut in this thing and how bad of a shape it was in, had to completely weld new plates in on this whole side, filling in a massive hole. And on this side, there's a couple holes. Got all the weld work done, got everything uh, shaved and sanded smooth. On the back side, all the wood was jacked up and rotten. So we had to cut a new wooden support, coat it in resin, put everything back together. The new flow right time delay control for the live well, all the switches controlling all the electronics and then mounted up the Torquedo throttle. Of course, we've got the Minn Kota puck for the GPS for the uh, trolling motor up front. Did the carbon fiber action, retained the original steering wheel, but dressed that up a little bit. And then of course you got turf on the front and side and it's super clean underneath. There is a USB port voltmeter right here. You could charge your phone, check your voltage on the accessory battery, simply on off switch on the unit itself. So <clears throat> nice thing to have tucked away. Over here is the flow right actuator for the valve and the pump in the back of the boat for the live well. Turf throughout the inside of this cockpit. One thing I did on this build is the deck actually overhangs. Not sure if you could see that deck actually overhangs over the turf and i plan for that in advance that way we don't have turf overlapping turf at the edge the turf is actually on some aluminum decking as you can see there and i also paint that in advance before i do all the turf and on this console i did these nice little reveals uh, kind of leaving the gray coming off the deck going through breaking that up and then leaving all the edges gray with a decal on the front 
and then the vinyl on the back and i really like how that turned out moving on to the front deck i tried something new with the rod locker on this one that i really really dig and i'm gonna show you that in a second replicated something that i liked off a previous build the el diablo build i did it had some of these aggressive angles and i wanted to replicate that in this one instead of just doing a squirt off deck and then what that does is gave us the ability to try something different with how this rod locker lid opens and then doing a 45 right here and it creates more depth inside the rod locker and let me show you what I mean for one the rod locker lid opens up and it's strutted this way you could access it in or out of the boat and as you can see I've got a couple rods in there just as a demo we've got the drain and again you've got that more more depth going back this way I mean even if you needed to you could put a rod all the way back in here I really like how this turned out being able to access rods easily whether you you're out of the boat or inside of the boat as opposed to just having the lid flip up this direction and then just having that aggressive line the added depth for some of your longer rods maybe some of your swim bait rods just think it's kind of a game changer and you can see these are seven foot twos and i could go all the way there that's my max so i've got another two foot so easily you could do eight foot plus rods no problem at all to protect my customer's investment, we've got HydroTurf fully on all the walls and on the bottom, and uh, also got the LED lighting inside of the rod locker. And this lid was made custom to order, which can be done. So if you're doing a build and you need something like this that's custom made, uh, the lids can be custom made to order. A lot of these lids are just sizes that are available, but with this rod locker lid, I framed everything in. I hit up Nate, gave me my dimensions, and a few weeks later, I have my lid. Right here, we have just got a storage hatch. And again, paint work done inside all the compartments. You can see the drains and everything runs through the subfloor and to a channel, directing the water to the back of the boat, turf in the bottoms, Nice little tackle storage area, hat channel underneath the lid. And then over here, we did a cooler. And so this, again, was custom made. As you can see the back tapers to mimic the whole shape on the outside. Uh, I've got foam all around this cooler. It does not make it a Yeti, but it does hold ice pretty well. Of course, we got the drain in the bottom, and that goes out the side of the boat. It's uh, not the most massive cooler, but we were able to make use of the space, and I'm sure you could fit a few cold ones in there. And up front, we've got one more storage hatch, and what I did with this design, because I did all the welded tube framing, I'm able to kind of evolve my craft, guys, and how I did this was I had vertical uprights down this side in between the rod locker in this main area and a couple verticals over here. But the tube framing welded has been a game changer because I was able to open up this whole area underneath. Let me show you what I mean. So he's got storage. He's probably going to put his trolling motor batteries in here somewhere. But honestly, if he goes lithium, they could go over there if he wanted to. And then up under there, he's got all that space all the way to the front of the boat, guys. You can see the drain tube there that's from the recessed foot pedal trolling motor tray. And then everything inside has been painted and he's got LED lights under there. And then you can see some of the electrical up running around underneath the framing. And I like this design because a lot of this stuff is accessible. So when he goes to install his graph, he's going to be able to route wiring easily to the console or to the back to the fuse box. Uh, whatever he needs to do in the future as opposed to having stuff hidden and never being able to get to it again and trying to fish wires through it's a nightmare so this is just a really clean easily accessible front deck up underneath we do have this seat base pedestal mounted center behind the recessed trolling motor tray so he could do his butt seat right there and uh, be on that trolling motor on this one Minn Kota Ultrex I believe this is an 80 pound yep 80 pound thrust and then on the bow, we did some custom LED lights recessed into the hydro turf. We've got a removable access panel here, again with a carbon fiber theme. Left some raw aluminum edge um, reveal up front, kind of mimicking what I did back there on the console. And then the bow is completely skinned and gator skins. And then way up front, we've got some hydro turf and some LED lights for the navs. So let me hop out and show that to you gator skins the hydro turf and the gator skins inset into this aluminum housing that originally had a rubber bumper 
the customer no longer had that part and we wanted to modify this area to be able to put the LED lights inside for the nav lights. We also did some LEDs around the sides, eliminating the deck. We've got one, two on the front deck and then we've got one, two on the back deck. I believe that is about it on this project, guys. Of course, this boat had a ton of labor hours into it to get it to this stage. And you can check all of that out step-by-step -step build process in the full build video of this boat. But again, I just do these walkthrough videos to give you a quick recap of how the boat turned out before it goes home with the customer. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully uh, you can take something away from this video to utilize on your own projects or you just like watching what I do. I appreciate you guys greatly. That is it with the Brie Bandit. We will check you guys out on the next one.